welcome back to Engadget's virtual CES 2021 stage. Thank you for watching with us. If you've been here all day, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And if you've just tuned in, welcome. Uh, this is the laptops panel for CES 2021, and it's about what laptops will look like for this year and beyond. And uh, joining me for this conversation, we've got representatives from HP and Lenovo, starting with Mike Nash, who is the Chief Technologist and VP of Customer Experience for Personal Systems over at HP. Hello, Mike, welcome. Hey, hey Charlotte, thanks for having us. Of course, and then from Lenovo, we've got Dilip Bata, the Chief Customer Experience Officer for the company. Dilip, thank you for joining us. Great to be here, Charlotte, and uh, good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, it's really nice to have you both here. Now, I, I wanted to do this panel because I thought, look, at CES every year, we hear about the iterative upgrades. We hear about the newest chips that are going to be in the latest consumer laptops. Right? We've got the 10th gen, the 11th gen, the next, next, next gen and onwards. But your two companies stand out to me in general because in addition to providing these iterative upgrades or con constantly chasing the thin and light, which is laudable and, and something that we like to see every year. In addition to that, though, your two companies often bring something quirky, something new and fresh that we haven't seen to the table. So I just wanted to kind of talk about that and how your both your companies kind of create your products, right? So just for CES 2021, let's start with HP. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about the news that your company had to show for this year's show? Yeah, I think honestly, Sherlyn, the most important thing that's going on is really how we're building products that support what HP calls one life, the bridge between your work life and your personal life, and making yeah. sure we're building products that really help us deal with what's becoming the new normal. The fact that I need to have yeah. great conferencing, so a great webcam, great microphones. One of the things we're super excited about is some of the AI-based noise cancellation that instead of using yeah. the angle with which you're speaking, we instead use... AI to filter out things like a dog barking or a lawnmower. Um, right. Also a lot of investment in five megapixel cameras on our Dragonfly Max to make sure you've got a super high resolution experience. And it's the sensor, not just the resolution that makes that experience be so awesome. Yeah, for sure. You, you brought up the uh, Elite Dragonfly uh, Gen 2 and Max. These are two of the more uh, intriguing products you've announced here. You've also announced the Elite Folio. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we're super excited about that. I think the Elite Folio is a device that, what's cool about it is it supports a number of different postures. Uh, it supports okay. a clamshell posture, a consumption posture, and a you know a tablet posture for using your stylus. What's amazing about that is, unlike say an iPad, it really is designed to let you work, use technology to work the way you want to work, as opposed okay. to making you change the way you're doing things based on a small limited set of postures. I also love the new pen in this device. It has a, a, a garage place where it can be stored, not be lost like it is in some other devices. And it's always being charged. And of course, this device is really cool because it's wrapped in vegan leather. So it's got a yeah. metal uh, frame, but the outside makes it think like it's really, a, like it's a folio, that's the name. I mean, that's that's what really stood out to me. The Spectre Folio, I believe launched in 2018. And that was the first time we saw this sort of vegan or leather covered uh, laptop design. And back then you did explain some of the benefits with this. Can you kind of remind us what these benefits of the half sort of leather build are? Yeah, the, the key benefit, first of all, the, in, in the previous version, it was actually real leather. And we got a lot of feedback oh, yeah. just in terms of durability and in terms of environmental aspects to having vegan leather was a better choice for a lot of customers. So in, in our commercial customers, we focused on that. But the benefit is, it has like a very personal feel. It feels like a high-end purse or, 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 or a folio you carry around, but it has all the functionality. And as you're showing in the B-roll here, what I love about it is it easily transforms from one posture to the next in a way mm -hmm. that really supports the different ways you wanna work or play. So annotating things up with the pen, watching a video on Netflix or Hulu in consume mode, but also being able to be really productive in the clamshell mode. And uh, we'll get to Lenovo in a second, but just on the Elite Dragonfly really quickly too, I wanted to mention there's a large or significant part of the Dragonfly series of laptops that are built from 
uh, I believe, recyclable or ocean-bound uh, materials. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We're very focused on feedback from customers that says, not only, frankly, as humans, we want to make sure we're leaving the earth in a better place than we found it, but also, frankly, it's become a very important purchase criteria for our customers. Customers are willing to you know, seek out and choose and maybe even pay a premium for a device that has otherwise ocean-bound plastic. So we're really excited to be using a large percentage of the, of the plastic parts from plastic that otherwise be floating around the ocean someplace. And again, it's really important um, in you know, the aspects of how we manufacture PCs to make sure they have more ocean-bound plastics um, so number two, make sure that our packaging is becoming much more environmentally appropriate. And frankly, really our focus on Energy Star to make sure our devices as they run are being much more frugal in their use of energy. Now, switching over to Lenovo, uh, Dilip, do you wanna run us through some of the highlights of what you've announced uh, at CES so far? Yeah, I mean, Sherilyn, just to give you a little background, uh, one of the things, uh, a lot of our products you'll see are generated by customer insights. Uh, we monitor close to 20 million different comments and also look at some of the big trends. Some of the trends that you're going to see in our products, uh, we have made significant improvements in audio uh, and camera. These are, again, iterative improvements, uh, but also increased battery life. Uh, we have seen significant improvement in displays, 16 by 10 displays, low blue light uh, emissions, uh, low, low blue light in general. A lot of our customers are their own IT these days. And so they have to be able to maintain and protect their own systems. And then the last one is connectivity. Uh, you have no idea how many times I've had my uh, calls and I've had to go to my son and say, hey, lay off that Xbox. In fact, I just did that right now and said, hey, don't get on that Xbox right now for the next 30 minutes. I'm going to be on a call with Engadget. So you'll see these trends. Uh, come through. But what I love about CES is, you know, we can bring in new ideas, new concepts, get feedback. It was exactly 10 years ago or 11 years ago where we brought in the yoga convertible for the first time, right? And today, mm -hmm. convertibles are doing really well. Some of the new products that we're bringing in, as an example, uh, we're obviously bringing in a whole new line of uh, ThinkPad products. We have, we're launching the uh, uh, 5G is becoming big, and that's what you're going to see in the future. Connectivity is so important. Uh, how, it, it, with everybody working from home, it is so important that if your Wi-Fi gets cut off, if you've got family members using it, 5G becomes important. So we, we're launching a number of products, including exciting new form factors like the Think Reality A3 headset. Right, which is an enterprise uh, grade um, uh, form factor where it allows you to basically uh, have a virtual display of five different displays, 1080p, where you can basically have five different screens or you can have remote uh, work capability, right? Or even devices like the Lavi, uh, the Mini Lavi, which is basically an eight inch, conver eight inch convertible and it, it can transform into your gaming device, right? And you can basically project it on a big HDMI screen by docking it. So I love the show. We're, we're really excited about some of the uh, products that we're launching. I mean, last CES, I believe it was the first time Lenovo even showed off your prototype foldable tablet PC. Uh, Lenovo certainly isn't one to, to shy away from being a little more experimental there. Uh, you also did really early on introduce a yoga book. I believe the, one of the first dual screen uh, laptop tablet hybrids there are. So again, I, I think people watching the stream know how, you know, how much Lenovo has been trying out in the space of PCs. But my question for both of you on the panel today, and I'll start with you, Dilip, because we're going to take turns with who answers questions first, okay? So, Dilip, answer me this. How do you decide what it is you think consumers want? Or, you know, a lot of people think maybe companies just throw ideas on a wall and see what sticks, right? And I'm sure there's more of a science to it than that. What is the process of coming up with something creative like the foldable or a yoga hinge, for example? What does that look like for Lenovo? Sure. Um, it's a great question, Sherilyn. I get this question a lot, right? At Lenovo, you know, one of the things is we are constantly listening to customers. I was mentioning, you know, we have, uh, you know, data analytics team that's basically mm -hmm. processing close to 20 million comments on the internet. And I can have sentiment analysis on every product. 
Now, if, if what, what did they like, what did they dislike, and then every product manager is taking that uh, input and feedback and improve, improving the product generation to generation, and we've seen that. We get customer NPS scores on what they like in terms of their satisfaction, in terms of their uh, effort, in terms of their, uh, you know, would they recommend the product. So we're doing oh, millions of surveys. We're processing close to 20 million comments. We're also doing ethnographic study. In fact, our Legion lineup of gaming devices actually came from observing uh, people and observing that people want a device that is powerful on the inside but looks professional on the inside. So by doing an ethnographic study and actually going into people's houses, what kind of games do they play? What does their desktop environment <laughs> look like? So all those factors go in to uh, discovering, but then also you look at the technology trends out there, right? Display is a great example. Last year, as you saw, we launched the X1 Foldable. If the display industry weren't ready, we wouldn't be there. So it took multiple iterations over four years to get the X1 Foldable out. So you look at technology trends uh, that's coming out of the marketplace. 5G is another one. You're gonna see a lot more 5G. In fact, our new uh, X1 Titanium, uh, that we're launching, uh, and our X1 Carbon, X1 Yoga, they're all 5G ready, right, uh, uh, to available. So it's a combination of looking at what customers are telling us, insights, focus groups, uh, talking to both consumers, enterprise customers, but then also looking at a combination of technology trends uh, in the marketplace. I'll get back to that a little later. Mike, what about you? How does, H how does HP make some of these decisions? I think the foundational stuff that Lee mentioned is, is exactly right. We're very big users of Net Promoter Score. I think the key thing for us that's emerging is the amount of telemetry we're getting in a way that's obviously respectful of customer privacy and, and really triangulating you know, the emotion of a Net Promoter Score response, how likely might I recommend with some of the telemetry about what's really going on on the device to try to derive insights, both for improving the quality of the experience, but also to make sure we're addressing the aspirational needs. I think the ethnographic studies are, are critical as, 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 as they are for Lenovo. But for us, we sort of go a step beyond that to try to really go look at what I'll call design thinking. Understand not just based on the technology speeds and feeds, but really thinking about the aspirational experiences, the problems to be solved by the customer. And then Frank will go back and build what oftentimes become what I'll call sort of low fidelity prototypes in hardware and software understand will these kinds of solutions make sense for the customer and then bring them out sort of more from a product perspective. I think another big thing we focused on over the last few years is really in addition to looking at technology trends, which obviously we're very, very close to, also looking at design and fashion trends. So the colors that we choose, those palettes, the fact that your HP laptop looks like a new Italian purse, that's not a coincidence. It's because we're going to those same design experiences and those same design shows to understand where those trends are going and then embracing those as part of our product design. I will say I do love the way that HP laptops look in general. The Spectre line is one of the best looking uh, I've seen. Uh, but, but you know, you brought up, by the way, the, the Levy Mini. Now, this is one of the most surprising products for me so far of the show anyway. And I think our viewers are pretty taken by it. In fact, uh, in our live chat right now, one of our regular viewers, Mark Dell, wanted to know how the idea for the Levy Mini came about. It is such a... It's not that, you know, no one has tried a concept like this before, but the Levy, again, to remind the viewer, this is a sort of an eight-inch netbook-ish uh, notebook with modern components. And then you can flip it around as a convertible and then add, like, little controllers to the size and turn it into sort of like a giant switch. Uh, Dilip, what sort of, what, what was the customer feedback that led you down this road? Yeah, I mean, if you think uh, this product was actually developed by our NEC PC division in Japan. And if you know anything about Japan, everything has got to be miniaturized. Everything has got to be uh, the ability to on go. So I think when talking to customers, the feedback definitely is, look, we want a full blown PC, but gaming we've seen is huge, right? So what if we could combine a device that could be a full blown PC, it's an eight inch convertible with gaming controllers uh, also, and the ability to dock at the same time. So again, that's what really led to this. Again, it's a prototype, right? And we're looking for to get some feedback 
uh, from customers. And we have a reputation of taking risks and innovating in this space, whether it's the Yoga book or whether it's the X1 Foldable, right? We're going to try different things and get feedback from customer. And if we get positive feedback, we'll launch this product. So, um, I mean, I'm personally a little bit skeptical about the typing experience on an eight inch device like this, but granted it is still a concept, a prototype, like you said. Now you mentioned that you're still taking customer feedback. Is there any way for both of you, HP and Lenovo, by the way, any way for say our viewers right now to get in touch? Is, is, is there a forum? Is there a, a hotline that they can call maybe? Uh, uh, Mike, let's start with you. Yeah, I think we have many, many forums on HP.com, and I encourage customers to give us feedback. Honestly, one of the things we've also focused on, especially for um, consumer customers, is right on the device is the ability to you know, frequently get a request for a NPS survey. Now, I'll tell mm -hmm. you that there are so many great ideas that you know we think we can think of everything. We certainly can't, and so many customer-inspired <laughs> ideas come in through that channel that's sort of you know available and. A thing we look at, I personally look at that data all the time, and the, and the notion that we get it in almost a real-time nature um, is, is super critical, and the forums are just a great place for that feedback. What about you, yeah. Caleb? How, does, how can people get in touch with Lenovo? And, and, and same thing, Sherilyn, when you go to lenovo.com forums, uh, there will be a forum on, the, uh, on this particular product, and the great opportunity to give that feedback. And I can tell you, every product manager at Lenovo is looking at the comments on uh, on our products. You know, what do they like, what do they dislike, and you will see that generation to generation. I still remember four generations ago on our X1 Carbon, uh, a lot of people are complaining about the audio quality speakers for generation, and today yeah. we've deployed front-facing uh, speakers purely based on customer feedback. Displays is another one, three or four years ago. In fact, the number one thing that we know that people talk about uh, on our forums you'll be surprised, is displays. And that's why we've significantly taken that every little bit of feedback and improved the brightness, improved the resolution, improving the color gamut, going to 16 by 10, going edge to edge. Uh, that's what customers are looking for and that's what we do. So yeah, definitely come on the forums, give us that feedback. And I can tell you, uh, we're definitely reviewing each and every piece of comment. It's certainly interesting you mentioned that displays have indeed, uh, in my experience, improved over the last few years on laptops. The audio improvement uh, seems a little slower, but I'm sure this is something that you both are aware of and are working on. I've seen some of your later, latest products that pay attention to those things. Uh, I did want to make sure we talk about just laptops more broadly also, right? Yeah. And you mentioned all these ideas that are coming up from your customers are so wild and so interesting. But what are the limits? What are what are you constrained by that that you know you still have to bear in mind, uh, Dilip? What what would you say is a, a physical challenge in in building something wild? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, your, your CPUs, your performance, your storage, right? I mean, we've seen uh, a significant improvements in the motherboards. I mean, they are miniaturized significantly. The keyboard is, again, you know, if you want a normal typing experience, there's only so mm -hmm. much, as you, as you yourself said, on the Lovey, it's an eight inch. Yes, yeah, so the keyboard <laughs> typing experience, you know, it's not going to be optimal on a, versus a regular 14 inch uh, type of form factor. But I can also tell you that when we have uh, done surveys with Gen Zs and we have talked to them, they're very open to different ideas. And, and in fact, we've shown them foldables, we've shown them convertibles, we've shown them detachables, and there is no winner uh, in this marketplace. So customers are very, especially the Gen Z and consumer, they're very open to different ideas. But I would say probably the keyboard's the, probably the biggest thing in general that I would say that kind of defines your uh, PC experience. But like I said, and we've tried that with the foldable, and you've seen what we do with the foldable. So I see foldables to be much more uh, a growing category in the near future. Mike, what about you? What are some limits that, or, or maybe there aren't any limits, but what are some limits that govern kind of HP's uh, more creative pursuits? Yeah, I, I think it's it's very much a balance, Sherilyn, where you want to balance both performance, battery life, and in some level, you know, thermals and the, and, and the size of the device and weight, of course. So I think you know, in some cases, we've seen some of our competitors sometimes making a device be super thin in order to do that, having to throttle back the performance of the device. And especially for emerging workloads like creators, customers tell us they'd rather have the device maybe sometimes be a millimeter thicker if they can get that much better video rendering performance. We really 
focused on those kinds of capabilities. I'll also say that you know, we're also learning a lot more, especially as people are working in these new, you know, work from home or hybrid workforce workplaces, which really add up to working more hours. We all know that. I think one of the mm -hmm. things we've been investing in a lot recently is blue light filtering, something called IE's technology that we're building in in hardware. And the benefit is you get the benefit of being able to look at the screen for a long time without being affected by blue light, but still have your color accuracy be, be appropriate. So whites look white, even though blue light's being filtered. So Mike, this question is specifically for you because Lenovo's already got a foldable tablet out there, but what is HP's you know, take on foldable displays uh, in its products at all? I think we're, we're definitely looking at that. I think we've sort of seen you know, the, the market emerging in terms of where the, the screens themselves and that technology being reliable. We want to make sure we're giving customers a product with great longevity. And frankly, also working very closely with our OS partners, Microsoft in particular, to make sure we've got software that can support those experiences. Oh, for sure. I think that's one of the challenges that I think we haven't really discussed yet. It's that like a lot of the limits tend to come from software. Often the hardware is great, but the software holds it back. And that's one of the biggest complaints from our end uh, thus far. I, I want to now zoom out even more. And since both of you are such experts in this space, I want to know what you think. So let's start with you, Dylan. What do you think, let's say in, in two years or in five years even, what will a laptop look like? What are the things that has, uh, you know, what are these must-have features, and then what are some of the wilder features we can expect? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think overall, what you're going to see in a, uh, whether it's in the next two years or within the next five years, uh, we have seen tremendous growth in the no, in the PC market. You just saw the numbers from IDC. Uh, in, you know, we haven't hit these numbers since 2015. So we're at close to 300 million PCs uh, in 2020. Mm -hmm. It's a growth rate of roughly, what, about 13, 14% uh, uh, in the marketplace. So uh, I'm bullish in terms of there's a huge market uh, that, you know, a lot of a lot of an install base that has older PCs that will need to buy upgraded or newer PCs. Obviously, from an iterative standpoint, you're going to continue to see significant improvements in, in audio, uh, in cameras overall. Uh, I mean, something as simple as, you know, we're instituting Dolby Voice. So we're all working remotely. And with Dolby Voice, you can actually feel as if you're like in a conference room, right? And yeah. being able to uh, hear what other people are saying, it's able to suppress some background noises. Uh, accentuate softer noises. It's the little things uh, from an innovation standpoint that'll make a big difference in terms of remote work, right? Technology obviously needs to help us stay connected, but also from our well being perspective. Uh, you heard Mike Nash also talk about our displays. Everybody's focused on reducing blue light displays, you know, going to edge to edge. Uh, battery life is going to get improved. Our IdeaPad. Uh, 5G, you're already at 20 hours. And again, that is as we hopefully get out of COVID uh, situation <laughs> as we're able to get out there, right? We need battery life. We need full days battery life. So you're starting to see battery life getting full day, uh, you know, getting uh, IdeaPad 5G, we're getting 20 hours. And my hope mm -hmm. is that what, that'll be the standard going forward, 10, 15, 20 hours uh, overall. These devices are going to be self-healing uh, in the future, as as we found out this year, there is no IT support now, right? Everybody's working remotely, so you have to be your own technician. You have to be your own remote devices. So you'll start to see these devices becoming self-healing, right? And being able to predict when things are going to happen. We're providing diagnostics to large enterprise customers and being able to predict when some of these, some of these drivers are potentially going to fail, right? With our self-diagnostic capabilities, connectivity is huge. Uh, I envision in a couple of years, 5G will be pretty much standard, right? Available on all the laptops. So you're no longer, uh, you know, throttled by Wi-Fi everywhere, right? So it's connectivity uh, anywhere and everywhere. What about you, Mike? What do you think uh, on that? Topic? I think I know. I know. Dylan's covered a lot. <laughs> I think honestly, for me, it's not just the technology for the sake of technology, but really where the trends are going with the customers that we're going after. I think in particular, this whole notion of a hybrid workforce, it's a very real thing. I think you know we, we know that you know today about half the global workforce is working remote. I think even mm -hmm. things as things go back to steady state, I think you know seventy percent of knowledge workers you know are going to want a hybrid remote office model. 
And really the, the notion of micro mobility becomes a really big deal where I may be working in different parts of my home. I may need to have great battery life even within the home. We're also very focused on helping to make sure that as customers have a notebook, they can dock. And we're excited about you know our embracing of USB-C for power delivery, for video, and for docking of peripherals. I think as we move forward, um, making sure we're making it easier for companies to deploy and manage the full customer lifecycle is critical. But as you think about the laptop of the future, certainly the fundamentals of keyboard and touchpads are critical. I wonder mm -hmm. though, if there'll be more scenarios where you're not always doing input via keyboard and not always getting information back via the screen and therefore mm -hmm. different, what I'll call next generation user interfaces become a critical part of the roadmap. Yeah, and Sherilyn, to, Sherilyn, to build on uh, Mike's point, uh, voice is going to be huge, right? Um, and we've seen that. We've uh, deployed the Alexa show mode in a number of our consumer PCs. So it's just like talking to any Alexa uh, smart device, right? So we've instituted that capability. So voice is certainly going to be huge. That's, that's a really good point you bring up. Um, I, I, it does sound, though, like a lot of these things are not you know, very obvious to the eye immediately. These are, you know, the general shape of laptops, besides what Mike has pointed out about if we move away from keyboard and uh, trackpad inputs, the general shapes of laptops don't seem to be changing all that much. I mean, besides uh, occasional like hexagonal shapes with the cutouts for the USB-C, shouting out to UHP. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, do, do you think then we're more or less settled in terms of form factor? We've, we've seen the sort of move from clamshell to convertible. We're starting to see some foldable uh, traction. Just shapes, right, of laptops. We think they're going to stay for the next few years. Uh, let's start with you, Mike. I mean, I think in particular, I've been really excited about, as you mentioned, Sherilyn, the, the, the previous Spectre folio, now the Elite the elite folio, because I think, again, it's the key postures it supports. I love the 360, don't get me wrong, I've carried one for years, but the idea of having the clamshell mode and the and the, and the consume mode and the tablet and the, and the, the, uh, the pen mode to me yeah. are super, super critical in terms of customer feedback. I mean, foldables, we've looked at them, they're interesting, but in terms mm -hmm. of where customer attention happens, especially I think we've looked at, you know, kind of as customers have struggled with iPad Pros, you know, they, they're trying <laughs> to be a clamshell, but really when it's in the magic keyboard, can you use your pen very easily? Can you watch mm -hmm. Netflix in a way that's convenient? We tried to make sure that without, you know, pulling the tablet off, you have the ability to go in those three pa postures and get what you want to do. And by the way, while storing and, and protecting your pen. Jaleb, what do you think about the shape of laptops in general? So, so one thing uh, I will say is uh, I truly believe computing is everywhere. I mean, I know we're so focused on laptops, but think about it, right? A couple of years ago, we didn't have these smart devices. We weren't using voice. We have these smart frames now. We have these smart devices. We have these smart displays. So honestly, you've got your computing anywhere. In my house, you, every room has some sort of smart device where you can talk to, get to get to know your schedule. Your car has a lot of this technology already, right? You're talking to your cars today. So to me, computing is just going to be everywhere, right? But specifically in terms of uh, laptops, I still feel we're in the very early stages of innovation. I mean, if you look at the car industry, right, how long has it been? There is no one size fits all, right? Today, people like SUVs, they like their trucks, they like their electric cars, they like their uh, convertibles, right? And you're gonna see the same level of innovation come into PCs. And just as I mentioned, the survey that we recently did with Gen Zs recently, right? Uh, this is 24% of our buying power today, right, with Gen Zs. And when we go do surveys with them, there, there is no one size fits all. They like different form factors. There's a lot of interest in convertibles versus just standard clamshells versus, uh, you know, uh, detachables or foldables. So you know, you're going to continue to see this innovation come through uh, in, in this industry. Um, and we're about out of time, but I wanted to do a quick shout out to the live chat. The original DJ Johnny Digital mentioned that in the future, all laptops should be round. We don't know that. It doesn't seem like that is the big takeaway from today's panel. It does seem, though, that we have some, we have learned a little bit more about how both of your companies uh, solicit or look for user feedback, and that that's a huge component of how you go on and create these 
you know, creative projects or, or, or products and bring them to life, which is really good to know. And then it sounds like technologies that or, or changes that we're going to see coming to laptops in the future, at least in the PC world, are mostly things that we can't see, like AI-based noise reduction. Seems like both of you are very bullish on 5G and different form factors, like the Elite Folio and foldables on the uh, ThinkPad X1 Fold front. So. I mean, I feel like I've learned a bunch from this conversation. Uh, thank you both for being here with us today. Mike, uh, it's nice to see you. And Dilip, you too. Thank you for joining us, both of you. <laughs> Hope Thanks you have for a good having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And for the, for the viewer at home, if you're tuning in live, we, in just about a minute, we are going to go over to the Sony press conference. So keep it locked here on Engadget.com or on the Engadget YouTube channel and then come back tomorrow for more.